Hi. Welcome to our 2021 Sacred Convocation. Who would have thought a year ago that we would be doing our second one without the, without the freedom that we've gotten used to in the years prior to COVID-19? It's interesting, we're doing most of the recording for this on Tuesday of Pentecost week. But already months ago, we had selected the scripture readings for the worship portion for the Tuesday evening of Pentecost, as if God doesn't have the last laugh on this one. Not a mean laugh, of course, but a, a chuckle, as God tends to do. We believe that God is at work, even in COVID-19 times, that he works through the word, that he works through the ministry of the seminary, and in spite of the fact that we're not doing what we had initially hoped or planned, God is here and blessing us. We had planned to be at Concordia Lutheran Church in Millwoods area of Edmonton for our celebration tonight. We had planned that there would be a presence luncheon and that there would be a reception and a seminary guild and a, and a good group of followers could be here. That was a year ago when we thought this would be short-lived. But then COVID remained, continued, came in surges and waves. And here we are. We had also intended that um, we, if necessary, could be here. Um, and so here we are. But instead of being live like we had hoped, we've done it all pre-recorded because we didn't even receive permission from Alberta Health to do a live event with our 14 bare bones people. That means that when we've been through five different changes in who would be the preacher in our preparation. We've gone through ultimate revisions um, or a countless number of revisions to the script and the adaptations that are necessary. And we've relied heavily on the resources that are available to us electronically that might not have been available nearly in the same way 10, 15, 20 years ago. But we thank God because he is here. And I'm thankful for you and as I introduce this 2021 Sacred Convocation, I, I just want to say that it is a very meaningful experience. Dr. Firm has been waiting patiently to be installed, waiting for COVID to release its, its grip on us. But finally, we said it's time, time for her to be installed. Last year, we put off the recognition of the three colloquy graduates and um, said, no, now is the time. And with uh, Darcy and his, um, his convocation and sending, we um, recognize that that's an important thing that we can't wait for. God, in his timing, has chosen us to be his children to celebrate, even in such a time as this. We pray that God would bless your time with us together, and I'm glad that you're here.
Good evening. I'm Reverend Dr. James Gimbel, president of Concordia Lutheran Seminary here in Edmonton. On behalf of our seminary's Board of Regents, who come from all three regions of Lutheran Church Canada, along with our faculty and staff, I welcome you to this very special, albeit unique, evening. This week, we have been celebrating Pentecost. Our readings in the worship service reflect Pentecost Tuesday. However, the day of celebrating Christ's resurrection continues. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I would add, God's Spirit is among us. He is among us indeed. On that first Easter, the resurrected Christ breathed the Holy Spirit upon his gathered disciples. At Christ's ascension, he commissioned his followers to serve as his witnesses to the ends of the earth. On the first Pentecost, God sent his Holy Spirit to empower witness and service as the Missio Dei, the mission of God, carrying the message of God's love to the ends of the earth. One of the ways in which Christians have carried out that mission over time is through the ministry of men who have been called and set aside by the church to be servants for Jesus' sake. Concordia Lutheran Seminary doesn't exist in a vacuum. We exist to serve Christ and his church by forming pastoral and diaconal students for ministry in his church. There is a circle reflected here. Families and churches entrust to us their beloved and talented faithful members, disciples to be trained and formed as students through our programs. After their studies are complete, we give them back to the congregations of the church to begin their ministry among you. Tonight, we celebrate this circle through the faithful and time-honored tradition of recognizing and sending forth graduates as pastoral candidates to fulfill God's Missio Dei. The program begins with an introduction and welcome from dear friends, representatives of the Lutheran Church from down in Lethbridge. Then we continue with worship, inviting your solemn involvement from wherever you are. Welcome to this wonderful evening. My name is Hilda Wing from Lethbridge, Alberta. And I am John Wing, together we're members of Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Lethbridge. We welcome you this evening on behalf of the congregations of LCC, and NALC, with whom the seminary partners in the Lord's mission. This is the 37th time Concordia Lutheran Seminary has celebrated a sacred convocation with student graduations from the Master of Divinity program. And tonight, the affirmation of new pastors by colloquy who will serve Christ and his church. Since 1984, this seminary has been entrusted by Lutheran Church Canada with the mission of forming servants for Jesus' sake. Tonight's celebration reflects this strong partnership between the seminary and the church. Pastoral formation is not just academic, but integrated with the life of the church. Seminary students are assigned to a field education partnership with a local congregation during their first two years on campus. And then, often in their third year, they're sent out on a full year internship at a congregation. If it's true that it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a healthy partnership between the church and the seminary families, and churches to raise up each new servant for Jesus' sake. It's because of this partnership that President Gimbel and a representative of the faculty will share the platform tonight with West Regional Pastor of Lutheran Church Canada, Reverend Rob Mons, and LCC Synodical Vice President Tom Kreisel. 
because Master of Divinity graduate Darcy Albers is part of North American Lutheran Church Mission District of Canada, we also welcome and NALC Pastor Reverend Charles Jackson, who will bring greetings and congratulations from our partner church body. The academic right that are connected to the different stages of the Master of Divinity programs are a big part of our focus, but so are the church's affirmations and actions that place these servants into ministry. And along with all of this, the scripture, preaching, prayer, and blessing that will that fill the program will enable the Holy Spirit to continue forming and strengthening us all in faith in Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. At the beginning of evening is the worship portion, including a sermon by local Edmonton pastor, Scott Lyons, vice chairman of our Board of Regents. Toward the end of the worship portion, we celebrate the COVID-19 delayed installation of Deacon Dr. Jen Frim as coordinator of the Deacon Training Program and adjunct professor. Then we shift focus to the pastoral ministry. That portion begins with a recognition of three new LCC pastors who are entering ministry by a seminary-led colloquy process. We thank God for these new pastors. Then the more formal academic portion follows, celebrating the commencement of this year's Master of Divinity Academic Graduate and announcement of his first call. Concordia Lutheran Seminary is glad you are joining us in giving thanks for all that the Holy Spirit has been doing and continues to do in and through its community to form servants for Jesus' sake. What a gift to rejoice in and be engaged in Christ's mission. To him alone be the glory. Those of you at home are probably not wearing hats, but as we continue with the worship section, we remove our hats out of respect for God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We pray. O oh God, 
you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many challenges and changes of this world, our hearts may ever be fixed where true joys are to be found. You have spoken through your Son that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few, inviting us to ask you, Lord, the Lord of the harvest, to send forth laborers into your harvest. Thank you for revealing tonight these aspects of your answer to our prayers. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, you fulfilled your promise by sending the gift of the Holy Spirit to unite disciples of all nations in the cross and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. By the preaching of the gospel, spread this gift to the ends of the earth through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please join me in reading Psalm 27, spoken responsibly half verse by half verse. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble, he will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, Seek my face. My heart says to you, Your face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O oh, you who have been my help, cast me not off. Forsake me not, O oh God of my salvation. For my father and my mother have forsaken me but the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading pointed for today comes from Isaiah, the 32nd chapter. For the palace is forsaken, the populous city deserted, the hill and the watchtower will become dens forever, a joy of wild donkey, a pasture of flocks, until the spirit is poured upon us from on high, 
and the wilderness becomes a fruitful field, and the fruitful field is deemed a forest. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness abide in the fruitful field. And the effect of righteousness will be peace, and the result of righteousness, quietness, and trust forever. My people will abide in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings and a quiet resting place. And it will hail when the forest falls down, and the city will be utterly laid low. Happy are you who sow beside all waters, who let the feet of the ox and the donkey range free. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is written in the book of Acts, the eighth chapter. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to him Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. 
A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. The figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus said to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, to Dr. Frim, our dear sister, as you receive your installment today, to our colloquy pastors and their families, Samuel Kim, Tim Graff, Sam Thompson, to Darcy Alvers and all your family as well, and to us, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text today is the Gospel reading. Let me read you the last few verses. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, I say to you, I am the door to the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and he will go in and come out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, and to kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Here's our text. This is a simple message that Jesus gives. And frankly, I love simple messages. To be fair, I gravitate towards the more complicated, but the deepest things in life are the most simple. In fact, I think all of us would like to be simple people. By simple, I don't mean that we're ignorant or boring, but we want to be people that live in those good and simple deep truths, those things that are valuable. Because the contrast to being people who live simple lives is something that's complicated. We don't like complications. Complications give us stress. You know those family meetings or those congregation meetings where they're way more complicated than they need to be? You know exactly what I'm talking about. You're all people of the church. (laughs) Those are not fun. We want to live simple lives that have meaning and value and truth that make a difference in our world. Of course, by being simple people, we don't mean do nothing either. When my car breaks down and a part falls off, the simplest thing 
which would be grab a roll of duct tape and toss it back on again. But that's actually going to make things more complicated for me. We'd rather have things simply done right. I believe that we want to be simple people. In fact, we like those simple and deep truths. The problem is, we always make things way more complicated than they need to be. So it is with our reading today. Jesus gives us a rather simple message. Now, to be fair, it is a little complicated in that he uses a couple different metaphors. He talks about being the door, and he describes himself as being a shepherd, but the message actually isn't complicated. And it's one of those simple and deep truths, those valuable simple truths, that our whole life is based on. After all, that's why we're here today. We're here because servants of the church are receiving calls or vocations to be of service to this simple reality that Jesus teaches. And here is what he says. Jesus says that he is the door. He is the door. He is the gate. He is the one through whom salvation comes. The one through whom we are made right with God. In fact, he gives us an abundant life. That's eternal. He has lived, died, and rises again to make this a reality. That simple truth is the bedrock on which the whole church is built. Jesus Christ himself. And he says, because that is the simple truth, anyone who is approved by me will come in, will be received by the sheep, and they will follow. Anyone else, anything else, they are thieves and robbers. Now, thieves and robbers do not enter by the door. They jump the fence. They sneak in the back. They claim a door all to their own. And because of that in this text, they face his judgment. In fact, what they do is they abuse the sheep to death. Jesus leads people to life. Jesus and those approved by him and those who serve him bring life to the flock. In fact, in his grace, he'll even include those who are not already part of the flock. In this text, it's foreshadowing us Gentiles who are brought in by the same Jesus, the door. That's the message. It's pretty simple. Jesus is life and salvation, and those who are approved by him join him in bringing that salvation to the world. Everyone else are thieves and robbers. It's not complicated actually really simple. It's the same reason that many of you, led by the Holy Spirit, came to seminary in hopes that God might call you to receive a call. And for those who continue to serve in your congregations and in your families as God's people, this is the truth. It should be so simple. Sadly, it becomes complicated. It became complicated for the Pharisees. <laughs> it certainly did. The Pharisees here, the context before this is Jesus has healed the blind man. He has done so on the Sabbath day, and the blind man confesses that Jesus is the one, the servant of God, who has brought him sight. The Pharisees struggle with this. They encounter Jesus and do not believe that he is who he says he is. They stumble over him, the open door, and reject both Jesus and the blind man as a sinner, casting this man out from the synagogue. I think it's fair to say that these Pharisees did not set out to become thieves and robbers. I think they didn't set out to become under God's judgment. In fact, they probably wanted to serve the same simple truth of God that you and I do on this day. But yet, when they encountered Jesus the door, they doubted, and all of a sudden, they started to realize they needed to say more. Jesus, the door, wasn't enough. They said more. They convict this man of sin and cast him out. They wish to keep the peace and not let this man upset the apple cart. They're concerned about how things are going, and so they cast him out. And all of a sudden, without meaning to, they jump the fence. They sneak in the back. They claim an authority, a door all to their own by adding things or refusing to say things that are true. They leave the simple truths and complicate things. It's an awful mess. And now Jesus is here in our text condemning them as thieves and robbers as being blind to their sin. 
How does it get so complicated? Well, we actually know this. We love simple. I love simple. We like it, and we want to dwell in the simple truths of Jesus being the door. Who, in fact, would want to make it complicated? But we do. I do. For those of you going out in ministry or learning, if you do not realize that you will be sorely tempted to make things way more complicated than they need to be. Get used to that thought. And those of you who have been in the ministry a while, those brothers and sisters, as you attend church and carry about the work of our Lord and your vocations, you know we're sorely tempted to make things way more complicated than they need to be. You see, we're sinners. And as such, we complicate things. We complicate things because we say too much. Jesus is the door. He is the shepherd. He is the way of salvation. Yet that doesn't seem to be working all the time. That doesn't seem to be enough. We need something else, something more simple. Perhaps we bind people's consciences under the law. Perhaps we create rules and rituals. Perhaps we come up with new teachings and new ideas because these will work better and people will love us for them. Perhaps we try to keep things too simple. Perhaps we keep silent instead of speaking the simple truths of Jesus. We want everyone to get along after all. We don't want conflict. And in both by saying too much and too little, by doing things God has not said and refraining to do the things that he has said, we join the Pharisees. We, we jump the fence and go in places God has not said. We sneak in the back to find our own way to God's kingdom. And to justify it, we claim a door all to our own. We complicate things. And to put this bluntly, it abuses the sheep. It robs them of the freedom, the grace, and the peace that comes from Jesus and his gospel. The abundant life that he leads his people for. We don't mean to. We love the simple. But we are people who make things way more complicated than they need to be. And of course, that complication comes from in here. Comes from in me and in you and our sinful nature. But I know there are other complications too. <laughs> we are literally preaching this days before the convocation. When has that ever happened? And could you ever imagine that happening again? There's so many complications out there, so many pressures. Those of you today who are receiving new vocations, I know there's so many pressures. You're probably well aware, or at least you should be, that you don't know half as much as you should. And all of the expectations are crushing. We have no idea what we're doing. And dear brothers in Christ who have been in the ministry for a long time, and yes, I can say that, I think, there's pressures too, aren't there? There's wayward sheep. There's itching ears. There's our failures and burnout and our compassion fatigue. And what about, dear friends of Christ of the seminary? We've got budgets, changing times, recruitment and staffing issues, and COVID and so on and so on. And then the church. Well, there's pressures there too, isn't it? Dear brothers and sisters, wherever you are watching this from, in your local congregation where God has gathered you, you can name them all, can't you? The changing demogra demographics. A world that considers us antiquated at best. Children that will no longer walk to the altar with us. There are pressures. There are complications. So many, in fact, without and from within, that we have no idea how we're going to manage. We have no idea how we're going to see this through. The idea of going forth and feeding the sheep, it paralyzes us. What are we to do? The good news is that the solution is simple. Not because it's ignorant or naive, but because it's one of those deep truths. In fact, it is the deep truth that we wish to live in each day. 
I was reminded of this deep truth early on in my ministry when visiting a woman who was homebound. And I love to tell the story that I did something wrong. I know we're not supposed to talk about ourselves, but listen to those whom we go to serve and bring the word of God to who are homebound. Yet in this particular time, I was beset with all sorts of anxiety over the complications of ministry, the complications of the parish and my own life. And I just started to tell her. I started to vent and she listened. Now I didn't betray confidence, but I poured out all of my fears and concerns over the complications. And after listening, she calmly said, Pastor, that sounds very difficult, but I know that the church has been here before, and God has seen us through. Now, I can't do justice to her words. You weren't there. You couldn't see her. You couldn't hear her. But what she said there was not dismissive, and it wasn't overly pious or superstitious. She wasn't giving some empty, ignorant statement because she didn't want to deal with the real complications that I was facing. She was simply confessing to me the simple, deep truth that in spite of all the complications, there was something that wouldn't change, that had been there before, would be there now, and would be so in the future. I believe she understood the simple truth I know, in fact, that Jesus claims to be the door, not temporarily, but eternally so. This is the simple truth. Jesus is the door, which means he will always be the solution and the salvation for me, for you, and for the church. There is no complication that can change this to him not you, not you candidates, not you professors, not you church people or pastors. It's not us. We don't have to claim to be the door or find any deep authority. Jesus himself will be the salvation of the church, even through us complicated people. And here's another simple truth that remains. Jesus says that it is he who will go to the sheep. It is he who will go to them wherever they are, no matter how spread out or what complications they face. The gatekeeper knows him, opens the door, and in he goes, along with those whom he has approved, his church, pastors and people that come to feed the flock. And Jesus feeds them. He always has, he will today, and he will tomorrow. Jesus feeds them to bring them life, even now. You are receiving the word of God recorded a few days earlier that promise you, through that same Jesus, the door and the shepherd, the forgiveness of all your sins. And he leads you into that life. There's no need to sneak in the back. Jesus comes to you. And this simple truth also remains, that Jesus not only comes to you, but he will lead you. He will lead you out to the life that he has prepared for you, that his own resurrection has proven is legitimate and real. There's no need to jump the fence. Jesus will lead you himself. And even more than that, dear friends in Christ, he will use us, his church, pastors and people, to feed his flock and lead them in the way of life and salvation. This is the simple truth. Trust that as Jesus has said he will do it, he will see it to completion. That despite all the changes and complications, these simple truths remain true. That same lady who reminded me of this truth, another, another time, after she had been fed by Jesus through the Holy Supper, and as I was going, I turned to her and I asked her a question that was probably a dumb one to ask. I asked her, is there anything else I can do for you? Now, it's a dumb question because it's open-ended. And of course, although those who are homebound are often seen as living a simple life, it's actually quite complicated. There is health problems, family issues, and all the concerns that go with day-to-day -day life. So many complications. So many ways she could have asked for something that, frankly, I couldn't deliver on. Yet after being fed by Jesus and being assured that he is her door, 
She looked at me and said with simple serenity, what more could I want? I went outside and cried, because that's true. That's the knowledge of things that do not change. Jesus is the door. It is he who says, feed my sheep. And that is actually so simple. Not because the world we live in or our hearts are uncomplicated, but because he will always do what he says. He will remain your door, and he will feed you. And he will lead you as you go out into the church to serve him, to be servants for Jesus' sake, to live simple lives, not jumping the fence, not having to sneak around the back, or to claim some authority of your own. But you can live simple lives as pastor and people, as the church, because Jesus does what he says he'll do. Dear friends in Christ, despite all the complications, hear the words of Jesus, your good shepherd. And may we pray and have confidence that God would grant us by his Holy Spirit the ability to live simple lives as servants for Jesus' sake. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. We normally would receive an offering at this point, but cannot pass an offering plate in this context. As we know, God has provided every good and perfect gift from above, especially our eternal life and salvation, for which it is all our duty, duty to thank and praise, serve and obey Him. We do that through faithful stewardship. Part of faith and service is the stewardship of what God has given to us, time, gifts, and abilities, as well as our financial resources. The sincere faith response of God's people is a privilege, reminding us of God's blessing through you. Through your gifts, God provides necessary financial support for the ongoing formation and training of pastors and deacons and the livelihood of their families. Without this support, we could not fulfill our mission. In light of many congregations that currently need or may in the near future need a new pastor or deacon, we thank God for each donor and your role in preparing these servants for the church. We pray that your support of us here at Concordia Lutheran Seminary might continue into the future there's an online link on our website for you to make donations tonight. In fact, it will appear shortly. Or you can use it later on or as often as you are led. If you choose to fulfill a financial role in forming future church workers through your donation, thank you. Because we strive to model mission zeal, a tithe of tonight's offerings will be also be used in support of our LCC mission work among the ethnic and cultural Lutheran communities here in Canada. Now, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, being rich, became poor for our sakes, 
that from his poverty we might be rich in his mercy and grace. We rejoice that you have blessed your people with resources and motivated them to apply monies to support your mission here. Bless all of our gifts and graces for use in your kingdom and purpose through Jesus Christ, the true Lord of his church. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, according to the church's usual order, Dr. Jennifer Frim has been called to the office of deacon at Concordia Lutheran Seminary, Edmonton, to serve as coordinator of the deacon training program. This office has been established in love by the support uh, by the church to support the office of holy ministry and to assist the faithful in their God-given vocations. Jennifer has been prepared for this office by prayer and study. She has been examined and declared ready to undertake this sacred responsibility and public trust. Let us hear the word of God concerning this office. The following passages support what's being said here. From Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also, then, must forgive. And above all these Put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Further reading from Romans 12, verses 3 through 8. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them, if prophecy, in proportion to our faith if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. From 1 Timothy chapter 3, 8 through 13. Under inspiration, St. Paul writes, Deacons likewise must be dignified, not double-tongued, not addicted to much wine, not greedy for dishonest gain. They must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience and let them also be tested first. Let them serve as deacons if they prove themselves blameless. Their wives likewise must be dignified, not slanderers, but sober-minded, faithful in all things. 
Let deacons each be the husband of one wife, managing their children and their own households well. For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and also great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. And finally, from Matthew 28, the word, from Matthew 20, the words of Christ himself. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lead it over, lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The word of the Lord. Dr. Prim, do you believe and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testament to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Yes, I believe and confess the canonical scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice. And do you believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian creeds, as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures? And do you reject all the errors which they condemn? Yes, I believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds because they are in accord with the Word of God. I also reject all the errors they condemn. And you confess the unaltered Augsburg Confession to be a true exposition of Holy Scripture and a correct exhibition of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church. And do you confess that the apology of the Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small called articles, the treatise on the power and primacy of the Pope, and the formula of Concord, as these are contained in the Book of Concord, are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith. Yes, I make these confessions my own because they are in accord with the Word of God. And do you solemnly promise faithfully to serve God's people in your office in accordance with the Holy Scripture and with these confessions? Yes, I promise with the help of God. And will you, trusting in God's care, seek to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and adorn the gospel of Jesus Christ with a godly life? I will, with the help of God. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you have heard the confession and the solemn promise of Jennifer, who has been called to the office of deacon in the church. And so I ask you now, in the presence of God, will you receive her, show her fitting love and honor, and support her by your gifts and fervent prayer? If so, then answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. The Almighty and most merciful God strengthen and assist you always. Dr. Prim, are you ready and willing to assume this office and work? I am. Jennifer Prim, I install you at Concordia Lutheran Seminary in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and most merciful Lord, by your Holy Spirit, you have given your people diverse and singular gifts. We thank you for providing faithful men and women in your church to assist the office of the holy ministry and to support Christians in their vocations. Grant your Holy Spirit to Jennifer and adorn her with wisdom and power from on high that she may serve faithfully in her work to the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Dr. Prim, go in peace and joy. The Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and bless and strengthen you for faithful service in his name. Amen. Walk with us, our serious son, hear when our weary spirits cry, feel again our loss, our pain, Jesus take us to your side, walk with us, the road will bend, make all our weeping, wailing Wipe our tears, forgive our fears, Jesus lift the heavy cross. Our Lord Jesus Christ instituted the office of the public ministry and promised to provide men who are apt and ready for its challenges. He himself prepares them for his service by giving them the necessary gifts and by encouraging their cultivation and exercise of those gifts through a variety of means. Concordia Lutheran Seminary is privileged to provide critical, academic, and practical formation to students in two special programs of pastoral formation that are administered by Lutheran Church Canada. One is the PAT program. For pastors in remote areas or working within distinct cultural or language abilities and needs so that they may be trained parallel to what a Master of Divinity degree offers. The other is the Colloquy Program, which is under the direction of the Church's Colloquy Committee. This program provides individualized instruction and mentoring through the seminaries to qualified students with previous theological degrees and church work experience. Late last summer, with our seminary's recommendation, following focused work with each candidate, the LCC Colloquy Committee approved three candidates who had fulfilled the seminary's and the committee's expectation by participating in steps designed to ensure fitness for ministry in Lutheran Church Canada. This recommendation has been ratified by the Lutheran Church Canada President's Ministry Council, and the men we're about to introduce are eligible to be called to serve in our Synod. With COVID-19 restrictions in place, we are not able to bring these men to or their families to Edmonton tonight, but we now shift to this virtual affirmation of their certification and welcome them as servants in our midst. I introduce these new LCC Colloquy Pastors. Vice President Kriesel, I commend these three men to you on behalf of Lutheran Church Canada for affirmation of the actions already taken to receive them into the Lutheran Church Canada Ministerium by Colloquy. Reverend Samuel S. G. Kim, who previously served in Brazil. Reverend Tim Graff, who has already served in Canada, and Reverend Dr. Sam Thompson, who has served in India. Each one has already been ordained and served elsewhere, but has received our LCC and CLS training and approval. Each one has received the Colloquy Committee's Theological Diploma. Pastor Graff has already accepted a call to Redeemer Didsbury, Alberta, and is serving there. Dr. Thompson has already accepted the call to teach and serve here at Concordia Lutheran Seminary, Edmonton, and we await his arrival. Pastor Kim is eager to receive a pastoral call and continue service and ministry here in Canada. Pastor Kriesel. Brothers in Christ. As you are now received into the ministerium of Lutheran Church Canada, we pray that your service within that office will bring honor and glory to our gracious Lord, and that your service in his name will be a blessing to his church and the world. St. Paul urged his colleague Timothy, 
Continue to do what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you have learned it and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is God-breathed and profitable for teaching, for proof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. Dear brothers, this is your charge also. And so I ask each of you, Reverend Graff, are you ready to serve in the place to which the Lord has called you? And do you intend to carry out your responsibilities as a faithful servant of Christ? If so, answer, I do so intend with the help of God. I do so intend with the help of God. Reverend Kim, are you ready to serve in the place to which the Lord will call you? And do you intend to carry out your responsibilities as a faithful shepherd of Christ? If so, answer, I do so intend with the help of God. I do so intend with the help of God. Reverend Dr. Thompson, are you ready to serve in the place to which the Lord has called you? And do you intend to carry out your responsibilities as a faithful servant of Christ? If so, answer, I do so intend with the help of God. I do so intend with the help of God. Pastor Graf, Pastor Kim, Pastor Thompson, with the whole church everywhere, we rejoice as you are now part of the ministerium for the office of the Holy Ministry within Lutheran Church Canada. As Vice President of Lutheran Church Canada, I celebrate the granting of the Church's Theological Diploma and ratify your qualified and eligible service in the public ministry of Lutheran Church Canada. Thank you. I'm privileged to serve Christ and his people in Didsbury, Alberta. Thank you. I send the ready to serve Christ and his church. Thank you. I'm eager to arrive in Canada to serve at Concordia Lutheran Seminary. On the basis of your public promise, and on behalf of the Lutheran Church Canada, I send you forth into the Lord's vineyard to be an under-shepherd of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O oh Lord, Merciful and gracious Father, we give thanks for all the blessings you have bestowed on Samuel, Tim, and Sam throughout his time for pastoral formation. Support, strengthen, and protect them as they go forth to serve in Christ's name by the power of his Spirit. Give them readiness and steadfastness in your service, patience, understanding, and zeal. Support and strengthen them in all things, so that by your word and spirit, your church may be built and increased. Through your Son, our true shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, brothers, go with joy and eagerness to serve as a shepherd of the good shepherd's flock. Preach the word of God administer the holy sacraments, pray for all in your charge, instruct, watch over, and guide the flock within which the Holy Spirit is placing you. Seize every opportunity to expand the bounds of Christ's church by extending the word of life to those who are still in darkness. Do this not for earthly gain, but with great joy, for you are called not to lordship, but to service. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. The almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Would the candidate for the degree of Master of Divinity please stand? 
Master of Divinity degree is a professional church work degree that recognizes the completion of the seminary's 100 credit program of academic and vocational formation. This degree is widely recognized as the standard academic credential for pastoral ministry. Dr. Frim, on behalf of the seminary faculty as faculty secretary, please present the graduate to receive his degree. Dr. Gimbel, I present to you now Darcy Duane Albers. This man has met all of the academic requirements of the Master of Divinity program. The registrar and the faculty have certified that he is qualified to graduate, and the Board of Regents has commended him as worthy of this degree. By virtue of the authority committed to me by the Alberta Trust Charter, granted to Concordia Lutheran Seminary, and as the Chief Executive Officer of the Board of Regents, I confer upon you, this candidate, the degree of Master of Divinity, and declare you to be entitled to all the rights and privileges that it confers. We are not robing you this evening because of COVID-19 protocols. Your hood is already on you. Your diploma is there in front of you. Make sure to take that when you leave. You will want it. Darcy, dear friend, I charge you as a servant for Jesus' sake to make the fear of the Lord your wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One your understanding. I charge you from this day forward to proclaim in the church and in the world the things that you have been taught, so that the Word of God, which is active in and through you, can create and maintain faith. I charge you to continue growing in knowledge, skills, and love, so that you can meet the challenges of days to come as a faithful steward of God's mysteries. As you do this, may the Lord of peace give you his peace. The Lord be with you as you enter your field of service as a servant for Jesus' sake. It has been a distinct privilege to have you study here and be part of our Lutheran Church Canada and especially our Concordia Lutheran Seminary family. We send you forth with our blessings, our support, our desire for ongoing partnership, and our fondest wishes. I invite Reverend Charles Jackson, representing North American Lutheran Church, Canadian Mission District, to share a few words. Please step. On behalf of the North American Lutheran Church, the NALC, we acknowledge Darcy Duane Albers' addition to the ministerium of our church. We are thankful also for the partnership with Concordia Lutheran Seminary and the formation that Darcy has received here. In recognition of Darcy's gifts and graces, the work of God through each portion of the formation process. I welcome you, Darcy, to our ministerium and as our brother in ministry, led by the Holy Spirit direction, to accept the divine call to serve alongside us at St. Albert Lutheran Church, St. Albert, Alberta. We, your fellow pastors in ministry within the North American Lutheran Church, stand beside the seminary and you as we pledge our support, praying that our almighty Lord would lead and guide your ministry and service within the pastoral office. God's peace, and joy to you in this role. I thank God for the nurture that I have received in the Lutheran Church, the formation that Concordia Lutheran Seminary has done to prepare me for pastoral ministry, and the guidance and the fellowship that God has continually provided through the congregations and pastors of the North American Lutheran Church. I commit faithfully to serve Christ and his church as he leads and with his strength. You may be seated. We continue reflecting on the Stay with us till night has come. Our praise to you this day be sung. Bless our bread, open our eyes. Jesus be our great Normally, 
the evening ends with the conferring of any honorary awards approved by the faculty and regents. There are, in fact, five categories of honorees. Candidates for these awards are nominated from members all across LCC, evaluated by the faculty, and endorsed by the regents. These awards are an important way for the seminary to affirm that Christian leadership takes various forms across the church. Although most leaders are humbly serving Christ without expectation of award or recognition, the honorary awards highlight and affirm exemplary ways that the Holy Spirit of Pentecost is at work in the new life of Christ for service to Him. Tonight, even though there are no awards granted, we'd like to let you know that if COVID-19 had not restricted us, we would have in fact had two honorees who we hope to affirm instead next year. May God's Holy Spirit work within us all, motivating and enabling us to serve Christ as He first served us. First of all, thank you for joining us in this very unique, second, but hopefully not habitual, COVID-19 influenced event in the life of the seminary and the church. Normally, the Seminary Guild would have provided refreshments, but sadly, we couldn't live stream squares and treats directly to your home. Nevertheless, Please feel free to enjoy your own refreshments in the comfort of your own home uh, using proper social distancing, but in spirit and faith apart, yet celebrating with us in fellowship with our circle of fellow servants for Jesus' sake. We are friends in Christ. We are all partners in Christ's own church. During the prayers, mentioning them by name, we will show photos of the spouses and families of these men now in hopes that you get to know them better. Tonight, special thanks to our partner, the Seminary Guild, especially for things that they do uniquely, the Take Wing program, the gift cards that support the students in their food, the pastoral care companion that they provide to students, for being prayer partners to the students, faculty, and staff, for the graduation gift of a walnut wall cross, for the new pastor's library money that supports them in their studies, normally also for the presidential luncheon, and this evening a bit of a reception in a box. I want to say thanks also to Evan Adams, for helping with our streaming, a lot of work has been put into the pre-recording to make sure it's all done appropriately and is all stitched together well. We give thanks to God for David Mitchell, our seminary coordinator of music, for working not only on the music, but with the projection of script and portions of the service. We give thanks to God for our librarian, our registrar, our IT technician, all the same person, Anna Yang as she coordinated support for the live stream. We thank God for Reverend Scott Lyons, Vice Chairman of the Seminary Board of Regents, pastor of nearby Bethlehem Lutheran Church, Edmonton, for being our preacher, preaching the Word of God. We give thanks for the members of our Board of Regents who provide solid and continual leadership, Reverend Darrell Soley, Reverend Aaron Astley, Reverend Scott Lyons, Reverend Tom Creasel, Reverend Robert Munns, Deacon Miriam Wynne Stanley, Corinne Nowichen, and James Dietrich, each one contributing unique and distinct, distinct gifts to the leadership here at the seminary. We also thank God for our CLS guest faculty, though they are unable to process. Reverend Dr. Lowell Eckert, Reverend Jonathan Kramer, Reverend Dr. Mark Press, Reverend Michael Keene, Reverend Dr. Ed Kettner, Deacon Michael Gillingham, Reverend Dr. Len Harms, Dr. Reverend Dr. Steve Chambers, Reverend Alex Mark, Dr. Scott Keith, Reverend Dr. Wayne Wilkie. We also give God thanks for the students and their families near and far, probably watching, supporting throughout the process. 
We give God thanks for each person here and for each of you. You are partners in our mission and our ministry. And we thank God for the faculty here, Reverend Dr. John Helwig, Deacon Dr. Jen Frim, Reverend Jim Heinbu, Reverend Ken Stadnick, as they serve Christ, servants for Jesus' sake here, allowing our mission to continue. And especially, we thank our gracious God, his gifts of mercy and grace, allowing us to continue to fulfill our mission here in his midst. And now it's time to close the academic year. By virtue of the authority committed to me, through the charter granted to Concordia Lutheran Seminary and as the executive officer of its Board of Regents, I declare the 2020-2021 academic year under the theme, Feed My Sheep, to be officially closed, though God's feeding promise and our mission of forming servants for Jesus' sake will continue onward. I close this year in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, we remove our hats for the prayers. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord Jesus, good shepherd of your sheep, we rejoice in the many ways you have fed and led each of us in the past year, protecting us from greater harm and danger amid perils and pestilence and pandemic. We thank you especially for regularly and continually feeding us with your word and sacraments, yourself for us. Lead us all to live and walk in faithful response to your baptismal call to us. Strengthen us through our trials and enable us to live spirit-filled lives that witness to the Good Shepherd's care and keeping. Let us live each Sunday, every day, as a little Easter, alive in you. Help us joyfully to serve you and eagerly to await your return to take us home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, we thank you for Lutheran Church Canada and all who are part of her. Bless us all through your word and sacraments, Tim and Tom and Mark, Marvin, David, and Robert, and all pastors of our church. Bless all members as sisters and brothers and witnesses and leaders and learners and servants for Jesus' sake. In this time of pandemic and unique forms of ministry, guide your people with wisdom, faith, and hope here and around the world. Bless pastors Graf and Kim and Thompson in their service to you. Thank you for our partnership with members of North American Lutheran Church, especially here in the Canadian Mission District. Bless pastoral candidate Darcy Albers as he continues to serve in your name, in your church, proclaiming you as Lord and Savior of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, be with the families of these men, providing for their needs and life in ministry. We thank you for Jane, Beth, and Shauna, as well as Laura, Lillian, and Asher, who are also impacted by these transitions in ministry. Be the stable rock and source of all hope and strength and peace in these times of transition. By your Holy Spirit, grant them grace in their field of service, readiness and steadfastness in their ministry, patience, understanding, along with great zeal and joy in serving you. Support and strengthen the men and their families, that by your word your church may be built and increased. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Fount of all wisdom, we ask your blessing upon our seminary. Guide all that we do. Bless all students to learn and grow, to be formed 
as willing servants for you. Send us prospective students willing to serve the church. Fund our mission to the glory of your name. Direct the work of regents, faculty, and staff, along with the many others, those partner pastors who supervise field workers and vicars, and especially those laymen and women who are partners, encouraging, participating, and generously providing the financial support that we need to fulfill our mission. Lead us onward until the day of your return. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Triumphant servant, we give thanks for the gifts and graces given to Dr. Jen Frim and rejoice in her contribution to our ministry as coordinator of our Director of Parish Services Diploma Program. We pray that you would bless her and her family, Jeremy, Ingrid, and Benjer. Bless us all during this unique season of ministry, and especially as we prepare to welcome Reverend Dr. Sam Thompson, along with his wife, Shauna, daughter, Sasha, and son, Sean, as they join us, hopefully this fall. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prince of Peace, bring an end to conflict, rioting, and violence, and injustice around the world. As pandemic fatigue and tensions arise, be present with your blessed consolation. Show mercy on your world, ease the pandemic, provide appropriate vaccination and preventive techniques, Provide comfort for the grieving, encouragement for those who experience distress, and peace to those who live in anxiety and fear. Continue to bless pastors and churches with opportunities to serve with the word and restore us again to the full communion of saints in this church militant. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Sanctifier, we pray that your Holy Spirit would guide and direct our sending and calling leaning not upon our own understanding, but resting in your almighty mercy and grace. Shape each pastor as your servant, who thinks theologically and acts pastorally. May all study of theology and ministry lead to doxology, the rightful praise of your name. As we close this academic year and theme, remind us that you have promised to continue to feed your sheep. And as we prepare to begin the next academic year, remind us that your desire is that we prepare shepherds after your own heart. Let that life of faith be part of each life here, next year and beyond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend these and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And now receive the benediction, the blessing of God Almighty. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his abiding peace. Amen.